Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. I'm here in the PTU 3.8.0 M patch, uh, and I wanted to talk about the latest patch notes and all that sort of jazz. But I also want to have a quick look at some of the mining laser heads. So, in the current patch, you are able to buy some very expensive mining heads. 108k for a mining head. But you can see what they um they do um, by mouse wheeling down in their descriptions. Because they do do a lot. Um, and some of them are very powerful. Some of them, like this one, are just very, 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 very good. Um, impressive power and increased range. So, that is very, very useful uh, as a mining um, head. And if you're mining regularly and that's the sort of one you want but getting just a standard um one or a cheaper one i suppose um for mining a particular type of material or if you're like well i do mine a lot and commonly th i have this problem then you can actually buy a mining head um specifically for your needs there are size one mining heads which are for the prospector and there are size two mining heads for the argo mole and the argo mole is in game currently in the ptu but is not available to anyone but a dev um, or the, or devs spawning them. Uh, I would expect to see the Argo Mole potentially in the the next patch, in the end patch or something like that. And they could put it in whenever they want sort of thing now. Um, but yeah, these these are pretty cool, these mining heads um, and these mining lasers. And uh, we'll, we'll grab one. Uh, less resistance. You can actually see the stats of what it does there and then you get a full description. Screw it. We'll buy a really exp expensive mining head. Let's buy the Helix One mining laser. Perfect. Why not? Now we'll fit that to our prospector. Right, so, still got the problem with the maybe glass being um, picked up and, put, and um, not put away properly, um, which is annoying. Hopefully, they will fix that very shortly. Uh, I would hope to have that in a live uh, 3.8 build um, to have been fixed. And then weapons, and then we're going to change the, um, no, we're not going to change the Veripuck mount. We're not going to change the misc. It is misc. Okay. We've got the Arbor mining laser, uh, and it's just sort of like the all-round standard one. Optimal range 30 meters. So what's, what's good about this one? Got a longer range by um, over 20%. Okay. For its optimal range. It's got better power transfer. But could be dangerous because it explodes big. Got all those sub-item sub slots as well. I believe these are for mining consumables, which are coming later. Um, maybe we'll have them in 3.8. I haven't actually seen them if they are in already. Don't think they are. Let me just double check. Make sure none uh, are here. Um, you can buy mining laser heads in Dumpers Depot. I'm in Port Olasar buying these ones. Um, they are just mining lasers. No, it's, it's just them at the moment. I do love the Prospector. Uh, we are going to take it to somewhere nearby to mine. Um, just to see how much quicker effectively it is at mining an asteroid. If it looks any different or anything. Bam. Because additional sort of like ways to mine things and more mining um, sort of like materials, so more con or consumables, uh, more commodities and stuff, um, are really going to help um, flesh out the game in the future, especially for trade and that sort of jazz. I do like the new cameras. They do make everything feel a lot better and the game a lot smoother. And this version of 3.8.0 um, on the PTU, which is still first wave, unfortunately. Um, they had a load of problems with the previous patch, loads of 30k errors. There are still 30k um, crashes, but significantly less. It is a lot more stable, this M patch. Um, we are going to go somewhere. So one of the other things going on here is that Dama, where I've come to, used to be, and probably still is, my favourite moon. And the planetary generation V4 has affected it somewhat. You can see the materials effectively on the planet's surface are a lot different. The generation. Um, 
of sort of like craters and stuff are significantly different. That get a bit closer. Actually, do we need to? Probably don't need to have our landing gear um down. We do want to scan for some mineables. You think they're by? No. And there's still some popping in of terrain. But I very much like the way they've done the sort of like uh, more sand dune nature of the planet. Got some obsidian ore here. Gonna let it check to see what we got. What else have we got here? Is it obsidian ore as well? A load of diamond in there. And grundum. Let's uh, let's grab both. So yeah. a mouse wheel up. A laser throw. I'm gonna keep that rock energy level in that green area. We should be able to transfer quite a lot of power into this rock very quickly. And then will it down to about, what, 40-ish percent? Should. Break apart pretty quick. Nice. Uh, and then we are going to go into sucky mode. Grab what we can. Oh, that's a big bit of diamond. Isn't normally how I wouldn't mind, but who cares? It's in the PTU. Right, we need to break down these bad boys a little more. Uh, I mean, that is pretty much nothing in that. But this has something in. Oh no! So this laser has quite a long range, it seems. You can probably edge backwards. It'll get quite good. Yeah, it can. Even at low power, that laser has very good um, cracking ability. So there have been some additions to the 3.8.0 MPTU patch. Uh, we have minor criminal infractions, so battery, vehicle collision, and vehicle destruction. They will now not be triggered when against fellow party members. Eventually they want sort of like a party member, your party leader can select um, if it's triggered on or off or whatever. You can select if your party will get done for crimes that they commit against themselves, if you see what I mean. They've adjusted view distance ratios for dropped commodities. They've adjusted mission rewards for the patrol missions. They've added options to enable look ahead target tracking to engage automatically. They've made some tweaks to the third person camera with its uh, max rotation angle and um, target offset. They've added an option to disable look ahead completely. Look ahead is now disabled during interaction mode and using the Moby glass. They've reduced unarmed combat movement speed. Uh, they've updated and tweaked melee stun timing and VFX. They've added mineable resources to the new Lagrange point clusters. So you will see large groups of asteroids and clusters of uh, these mineables at certain points around in space. They've adjusted the visibility of some visor elements and they've remixed the ship audio volume levels. Let's see if we can get quite far away. We can. We can get quite a distance. It will still put the energy into the rock pretty easy. Okay, that's really pretty cool. 
for those size 2 mining heads as well. We're only using size 1 here because that's all the Prospector can use. The size 2 ones on the mold are supposed to be even better and longer range. Um, which is pretty cool. Right. What have we got here? Anything I'd rather take? Burl! Oh, that's a lot of Krundadum! Oh, so I just. Uh, go into extraction mode. Might as well just fill up. Then we can uh, go drop our ore back off. Perfect. Right, let us get out of here. You can see what Domar looks like as I leave. We've got a dust storm going on as well. So there are new weather effects. Obviously, the dust storm is based on the wind map and it is different to Microtex because you see snowstorms there. But here you see sort of like sand and dust storms. And they can get quite bad and obscure your view pretty extremely if they want to. Um, let's, as I said, let's get out of get out of here. Eventually we will have dynamic weather, which is the, the dream. So the new sort of procedural generation used on planets is updated now for all the moons and all the planets, the Planetary Tech V4 stuff. Um, you see weather effects, it's not dynamic weather, but it's getting there, um, it's a step towards it. But you'll see less popping, hopefully, sometimes you see a lot of popping still, um, especially around New Babbage Microtech. You still see some popping around when they change levels of detail on the planets. But there is a new style of procedural generation, updated assets, better looking um, better scaled terrain, better shadows, all that sort of stuff, and it really does make the planet look pretty cool. Um, Aura Moon, and you can see here, this is updated, changed Daymar as we're coming out um, from it. And it, it does look significantly, significantly different. And you can see sort of like different areas of, not necessarily biome changes, but sort of like terrain, procedural generation terrain changes, um, with like mountains and more cratered areas. Um, sort of like some variants within the same biome, um, or similar biomes. Uh, but yeah, I, I think it looks absolutely beautiful. And we will eventually go around to all of these um, planets and moons, uh, probably once the uh, 3.8 is live, uh, and, and have a look at the changes in a bit more detail. But I just really liked that. You can see the little tiny craters um, now from really far out, um, and actually not see so much of a change of level of detail or popping anymore. It's, it's, it's much better than Planetary Tech V4. But let's go back to uh, Port Olisar and sell our load. We had a load of bug fixes as well. They fixed Chrome Stat Generation for AI if they have no Chrome Stat rating themselves. The ships should now be consistently claimable and duplicates should not occur. Shopkeepers should no longer be away from their desks. Uh, party launch should now consistently work, which is great. They fixed an issue where wearing specific helmets would cause the player shadow to not show on the head. They fixed an issue where objective markers for claim jumper missions would duplicate and not be removed on mission completion. Players should no longer get stuck on a black screen when they respawn. Missions should now track kills and complete normally. There should no longer be a placeholder label name when scanning for materials and uh, mineable rocks. Players should no longer be able to occasionally walk into the no-fly zone kill area while on foot around New Babbage. Their failed mission objectives should no longer provide rewards when the mission is completed. Spawning a reclaimer or a 90 jump at Lawville should no longer cause the ship to explode on the pad. There should no longer be a restricted area above Riker Spaceport. The Levski Quantum Travel Marker should no longer appear out of range after arriving at Delamar. The escort ship as part of the escort missions should now consistently appear upon reaching the objective. Players should now be able to land in Lawville Hangar 2 and 3. And the Lancet mining laser should no longer fire straight down. They fixed six server crashes and four client crashes as well. And as I said earlier, there are certainly less 30k crashes and it's a lot more playable this patch because of that. 
So mining is a sort of like very legitimate gameplay loop. Um, even now in the game, it's one of the more fleshed out, full of like areas. And if you've got a starter package, I would do some sort of like um, potentially combat bounty missions, clearing out of um, Security Post Korea, that sort of stuff missions. And then when you've got a little bit of a uh, little bit of cash after doing a few missions, rent a prospector for a day, go to Lawville um, or um, Area 18. Um, so Hurston or Arc Corp, uh, and then rent yourself a prospector for a day and go mining, um, and you'll be able to make a lot of credits. I am very bad at stopping, apparently. Right, let's comlink across. Please proceed to assign landing bay. I do like the fact that this latest patch is a lot more stable. No 30k so far for me. And no disconnects. There's still a load of problems to solve for sure. But much better. Oh, you do not. You do not have very good acceleration control. I'm talking about me. There we go. Go on. Have a little land. We'll see how much that stuff is worth. So, we've got 7k's worth of materials. It's a shame we couldn't pick up more diamond. I've got a huge amount of inert materials because uh, I'm a terrible miner, um, but don't worry about that. Um, my corundum was worth was a good amount. I sell all that to the refinery. Bam. Um, 7k. Perfect. Almost, what, 5 or 6 percent of the way of paying off our uh, big expensive mining laser. But uh, if you were mining properly, you'd be able to do that a lot quicker, I think. Um, and it's still good money. Still pretty good money. Every month we have a Star Citizenship giveaway for December, and to celebrate 2019, we are giving away a Carrick, the Mighty Explorer ship. It does also come with that Pisces and the Urza Rover too. To be in for a chance of winning that, all you need to do is comment on any of my videos made during this month of December. Only one of your comments counts per video. Full details down below. A quick bit of shilling as well. Shadow provide remote access to high-spec gaming PCs as a subscription service, so you don't need to maintain your own gaming PC. You can leverage the power of your internet to turn your phone, tablet, laptop, or home PC into a monster. They are taking pre-orders for their new hardware configurations, scaling for 4K gaming, up to 32 gigs of RAM, and a GeForce Titan RTX, which I am very much looking forward to playing Star Citizen on. Links below and use the code BOARDGAMER to get a discount. There is also an additional offer if you are in the US as well that you get basically 50% off and you can even use my board gamer code on top of that as well for additional discount. Ah. I also use NordVPN, which I've decided to continue to support as they appear to have one of the best VPN services currently available at an affordable price. If you're looking for a VPN, consider them. Links below. Thank you so much for watching my video to the end. If you would like to share my video, comment, uh, subscribe, like, all that sort of jazz, ring the bell. That all helps content creators. Also, if you want to further support the channel even more, there's Patreon, there's direct donation, there's the YouTube join button as well, which gives you access to some more sort of like exclusive content from me. Thank you very much for watching. You take care and I'll see you in the verse.